What's up grinders? So today we're going to look at how languages actually work behind the scenes and I'm going to give you a visualization of what's happening in your head as you start to learn a language. Essentially it all boils down to like a pathfinding algorithm with weighted values that are applied to different words or concepts like abstract ideas and stuff. And you'll see how this whole thing works basically in a very holistic but very small way. So first we're going to start with our entry point. Now in the programming world this is based basically the first thing that starts a program. It's where a program starts. And for you, it might be the thought that comes into your head. Like literally the thought is the language, if you've noticed that, but let's just say it is the entry point for the thought. So you've got a thought and you want to like generate this thought and create words that match with this like abstract thought that's happening behind the scenes. So you've got your entry point and you'll notice straight away, we can't go anywhere in this language because well, we haven't learned anything. There's, there's nothing to connect to from here. So this is a language which you haven't learned at all. Like if this was be with me with French, basically, I'd be like, I have nothing to say because I don't know anything about French type of thing. Although I do know a little bit, but like, I'm just giving you guys an idea here. So the very first thing when you learn a language is, well, you're going to learn some very basic words like I, so that represents you as an idea. And then you might also learn dog and cat. Like these are things you're going to pick up on pretty much day one when you're learning a language. But again, you're going to have your abstract thought and it's going to come in and it's going to find a entry point within that language of words that you know. So, well, the first thing I want to express is, let's say I love dogs. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to go, uh, I haven't got a connection anywhere. But I do know the word I, so I'm going to like forcibly use this word over here. So there's like literally no connection here, but I know I can create one. So I'm going to go mm, I, and now I'm going to go, okay, I want to say I love cats, but, or I love dogs, but I don't know how to phrase that. And I don't even have the words for that. So I might then go back to here and search for the word that I know that I know, which is cat. So it's like literally I cat. And you know that's not right because you're missing information that you want to express there. And now you've got kind of like a very soft entry from the entry point also into the word I and into cat. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. And we're going to go I and cat. And then we may also do the same with dog. But we haven't actually generated any connections between these concepts within our head, which is where the next part of the language comes in. So you learn the word for love. Okay, and you, you learn basically, or you see a demo sentence of it. So you learn, okay, well, I've got an entry point. I want to go to I, and now I rolls into the word love, and you want to say, I love cats, but you don't have a concept of the plural yet. So you're just going to stop there, and you're going to go, I love cat. Now, you've probably heard people make those types of grammar mistakes in a language because, well, they haven't learned the concept of the plural yet. But you're going to do this, and someone's going to go, oh, there's a, there's a mistake there. You should be, like, putting an S on the end of the word cats, and you're going to learn the concept of the plural. So you're going to go, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go now follow the path that I've treaded before. I love cats. And now you see what's happening here is this path between these words is actually now getting stronger. Although this last part here is actually still quite weak. It's only got one connection. Well, here we've made multiple connections or well, realistically not multiple connections. We've just thickened up the existing connection. Now, the same thing is going to happen here is you're going to go, I love dogs and based on feedback either like in written form or someone telling you or what you're hearing you're going to know that you can follow that path so now you've got like this pretty set sentence structure that you can keep following each time i love dogs i love cats over and over and over and these connections will start building up and getting thicker now obviously as you start advancing you're going to learn some more words you're going to pick up things like are fun and you're going to go okay well i'm going to start at my entry point and i want to specify you know dogs are in some way fun. And you're going to learn the word for R. So you're going to go dog. So now you've strengthened up this connection between dog and the plural. R fun. Okay. Now you may also try something like I love R fun, but you're going to get like obvious feedback from the environment. People around you are going to point something out. You know, in some way or another, you're going to figure out that that's a bad connection. And it's quite weak at this point, so eventually what's going to happen is that connection is not going to be used anymore. And language is actually a process of constant learning and forgetting, and that path there is going to undergo something in the programming world we'd call garbage collection. When it's no longer used, it will slowly disappear in the memory sense. Like that connection will just basically fade away, and you'll know that you can't do that. So, but you will know that you can say dogs are fun because the feedback that you're getting based on how you're using it, based on what you're hearing and all this type of stuff is going to strengthen that. So now you've got like, 
if you've noticed here, quite a few connections going into this dogs word quite here. So this word is now starting to move out of your passive vocab and into your more active vocab because it's got so many connections going into it. Now, you may learn next, can see a uh, in some form or another. So you're going to learn, I can see a uh, dog okay and you're going to repeat that a few times and that connection over time is going to thicken up and you're going to possibly also learn that i can say i can see a cat okay now you'll notice that this connection is not as strong as that one because we haven't repeated it as much but if i keep doing this i can see a cat these connections are starting to get strong these words cat and dog have now started to cement themselves within your brain because you've got multiple connections from different words coming into it Although you'll notice that this word over here, fun, doesn't really have that many connections yet. So it's kind of still sitting out there in your passive vocab in a sense. Now you might learn something like scared of next. So you'll learn, you could say something like into here, I scared of, and then you might go over the cat. Now someone's going to point out that there's some mistakes there. You can't just say I scared of, and it's going to direct through a different path. And again, that path will weaken up and it will disappear because you've kind of learned that you shouldn't be going that route. But you're going to learn that you can start at dogs from that entry point. Dogs are scared of cats. Now that's not true, but I'm just giving an example here. So it should actually be, you know, cats are scared of dogs. And that path is going to strengthen up over time. So cats are scared of dogs. And you might try slotting more and more words in as you're learning more and more animals. These paths are all strengthening each other. And you'll notice now dogs and cats, they've got a lot of things going into them. Even the word are has got quite a bit now. But of is actually quite weak. Now let's assume that this is the end of it. You stop learning the language for whatever reason you lose interest. Now what you're going to notice here is that this word of has only like literally two connections going into it and over time what your brain will do is start garbage collecting it'll start getting rid of all these things that it doesn't use very often type of stuff and this word of is just going to like disappear at some point okay so let's just go grab that and kill it off and that connection is going to basically break and your brain is going to maybe try and reroute this one through the word cat so you or through the word dog you know so you'll end up with a situation where you'll say you know dogs are scared um cats like you've kind of forgotten that word because you haven't used it very often you've, you've barely used this language anymore it's disappeared but then someone might point out that you know the, the word of exists and you've kind of forgotten that and then of will like get re-slotted back in here and these old weak connections which kind of just disappeared into the never will then like start rebuilding type of thing so basically what learning is in a language is a pathfinding algorithm. You get better and better at finding which are the correct paths to take to get to your um, intended destination. And by following these paths, you're strengthening up the individual connections between these specific words. And when you finally stop using these things, depending on how strong these are, like if you only just learned this yesterday, the whole lot might disappear within a day. But if you've been learning this for years, you're basically going to see this periphery of words start to like disappear and it will slowly move inwards until you get to like the main words in the language type of thing. Um, and if you lose one word that's quite important, it could literally break up like your speech in drastic ways. Uh, so basically, I just wanted to give you guys like a visualization of what's really happening behind the scenes. And why I wanted to give you that is because it can help you understand why I talk about specific methodologies and why some methodologies are good and why some methodologies aren't so good. Because what you're trying to do at the end of the day is get the words into your head associated with the correct meanings and building paths between them and fortifying those links between them in an effort to fight off to starve off that secondary system of your brain which is there basically you know garbage collecting and getting rid of stuff so you're basically in a constant battle of trying to expand as you're losing stuff and as long as you can outpace the loss you will eventually get you know the vast majority of the language and the more you use it the stronger those connections get and the more longer it will remain in your memory so you're always going to be in this process of growth and loss at the same time as long as you can just keep outgrowing the loss type of thing so now also here i pointed out you know individual words but realistically in your brain it's not individual words type of thing uh, i just wanted to like kind of give you guys a, a simplified overlook about it okay that's pretty much it if you guys have liked this video make sure you sub to the channel many of you keep coming back watching and not subbing and i'll see you all in the next video and if you're not there the very next word all of humanity will forget is your name